Proverbs 18 and verse 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. Now this is um, a very deep and, and um, many faceted consideration, one that we don't give a lot of thought to in a, in a, in a, um, normally. But if a man suffers a loss, an external loss of some kind, a death, that's something that can devastate someone to lose a loved one, some type of a debilitation. You lose your sight or you lose the ability to walk or something like that. Um, some people... I'd say many people would be devastated by some kind of financial disaster that left them destitute. Relationships gone wrong. How hard that can be. A great failure of some kind when someone fails at something important to them. That can be very, very terrible but it's strength of spirit it's what a man has or a woman has on the inside it's their character it's who they are it's the soul the spirit that will sustain them or not that's the hope that's the the need when there's an external horror of some kind, something that happens to you. It's what's in you that will sustain you if you're to be sustained. We've all known people who have suffered great loss and affliction that have done so with grace and determination to honor the Lord and a strength of spirit that's admirable and a joy to see. Some of us have also seen people's spirit crushed. And it's a terrible thing to see. I believe I've seen that maybe two or three times in my whole life. And there's no real recovery from that. Certainly, apart from the grace of God, there's no recovery. You see, that's where hope resides, is in the spirit. That's what will bear a man up when everything else or even something else that's vital or precious to them is lost. Hope resides in the spirit. And when hope is, is crushed... There's no recovery. There's nothing to sustain a man. In the words of our text, there's no sustaining you unless it comes from within. And for the true understanding of our text, we have to talk about what a man's hope is. Why are spirits crushed or not? Depends on what your hope is. That makes the difference because you see, there is a difference. There, there's one man may lose everything he has and go jump off a building. Many people have done that or something like that. And another man may lose everything he has and say, the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So there is a difference in the one man's hope was in money and material wealth. And when he lost that, he lost his hope. His spirit was wounded and hope was lost. But the other man lost everything just the same, but his spirit sustained him because he had the spirit of Christ. And money was not his hope. 
Christ was. I've seen a lady lose her husband and completely transform before my eyes into someone ugly and very hard to even be around. It was somebody I loved very much, but I've seen another bear the same loss with grace and resignation to the Lord's will and be an example to others in that. The difference is not in the strength of the person. The difference is the spirit within them. But that difference is God. When an unbeliever is wounded in spirit without grace, they lose hope. And they can't bear it, according to our text. Who can bear that? You can't bear it. Cain said, my punishment is greater than I can bear. 800,000 people commit suicide every year. Have you ever wondered what depth of hopelessness you would have to come to to end your own life? Every 40 seconds, somebody does that. Almost 50,000 in this country alone. And how many lose their minds? Why do homeless people sleep in a box under a bridge? Or many committed to asylums? I'd say mostly because of their spirit is crushed and broken and there's no fixing that. Drugs can't fix that. They can just mitigate the symptoms of it. Here's an important lesson in this. A believer is wounded in spirit deliberately by God. The Lord breaks our spirit on purpose. And that's important now. And he does it in the most deep and elemental way. You see, people kill themselves or they lose their minds because of problems. God shows his people that we are the problem. You can't sink lower than that. We lose all hope in ourselves, but God in his wonderful grace shows us that all of our hope is in Christ anyway. It always was. We just didn't know until he revealed it to us. And this is most important in Something we ought to be deeply thankful for and pray for for others that we love. Somebody who knows the Lord Jesus Christ in the forgiveness of sin. That problem, our sin problem, us being the problem, the problem of all problems being done away with by Christ. We're healed. Our souls are healed. He broke our spirit, but he mended it. He wounded our souls, but he quickened us together with Christ. And we understand now, since that we see to be the problem, the things that other people call problems, those aren't the problems. Those are the symptoms of the problem. And you can't just treat the symptoms. There has to be a rooting out of the problem. If there's to be true healing. And that's why only God can heal a soul. When you know that the only real problem is sin, and that's been dealt with for you by Christ, other things that people kill themselves over and lose hope over, they're not the same way for us. We don't think of them the same way. We don't look at them the same way. They don't affect us like they do the hopeless and lost. 
And this manifests itself also in small things that, that get people so twisted up, that get people so bowed up and, and so consumed by, by, by a sense of revenge or getting even or settling the score, bring out the ugly nature of people. A believer tends to not get that upset when they get a scratch on there. Somebody scratched my car. You know, or the, the cable man left a tire track in my lawn. I'm going to sue somebody. No, nah, not going to sue anybody over that. Somebody said something that, about me that wasn't true. Join the club. <laughs> it's not the same, you see, because we understand what a problem is <laughs> by the grace of God what real trouble means. And God has healed us of all of our soul's diseases. We know by the grace of God that a man could gain this whole world and lose his own soul and the whole world wouldn't profit him one whit. And so our soul being redeemed by Christ Bought with his precious blood, the world has lost its shine. And the temporal things, the things that God calls for us, the former things like death and debilitation and broken relationships and money, these things come and go and our anchor holds because Christ is the anchor of our soul. He has wounded our soul, but then he healed it. He's broken our spirit, but then he mended it, and he is our hope now. And if he is your hope, if in trouble and despair and heartache and pain and fear you look to him, you can't lose your hope. You cannot lose it. Judas, when he realized that he had betrayed the innocent blood, went out and hanged himself. But those in Acts chapter 2 that heard that they had crucified the Lord of glory, in verse 41 of that chapter, it says that they gladly received the word of Simon who said that there's remission of sins in Christ and they were baptized in his name. The difference is grace. The difference is grace through faith. The difference is in here. The spirit, no matter what happens to us or with us in this world, the spirit of Christ in us will bear us up. We know that he is the one that brings trouble. He is the one that causes the heartache. But with his spirit in us, we're able to rejoice. We're able to sing in the prisons and to praise his holy name in all affliction. The difference is grace, the gift of God, the gift of God. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift.